Whenever someone mentions the name Leica, the first thing that comes to my mind is excellent quality cameras, lenses and binoculars. And they're very expensive as well. Now, in the camera world, Leica is about as popular as Rolex and they're priced accordingly. But we're not here for their cameras and optics today. We're here for these two, L1 and L2. You see, Leica has made some watches. Now, I know how good Leica cameras are, but my question is, how good are these watches? Let's check them out. Recently, I was invited to a launch of these two watches at the Liger Boutique in Collins. And the turnout and the vibe regarding the release of these two watches was quite electric. The wine and the food was exquisite, the people were excited, and the overall atmosphere was conducive. Now, being a professional photographer of 30 years, I know how good Leica is. Their cameras, their lenses, their binoculars, I've had hands-on experience with all of them for many, many years. And being a company that makes precision glass and prides themselves on fine tolerances in German engineering, it only makes sense that they put their hand to creating a watch, or maybe two. And not making a watch, but creating one from the ground up, movement included. And that's exactly what they've done. Now before you get all excited about these watches, there's something you should know, the price. You see, I did mention that Leica cameras and optics are on the high end of the food chain. Well, these watches are no different. This L1 will set you back roughly 15,000 Australian dollars and the L2 comes in at a tad over 21 grand. And for those in the know, Leica have teamed up with a gentleman named Mateus, a former movement builder called Alange Unzone. So what is this watch? What makes it a Leica? Well, in short, it's designed to look and function similarly to a camera, but on your wrist. And in keeping with Leica's branding and design concepts, I think they've approached this very stylishly. Now, it's not a perfect watch, it's far from it. And we all know that such a watch does not exist, but it's unique and it's very, very different on so many levels. Firstly, if you look at that dome sapphire crystal, it's meant to represent the front lens element of a camera lens. The case itself is designed to look like the profile of a camera, incorporating pushers, buttons, not dissimilar to a shutter release and similar camera dials. One thing that did catch my attention was that crown. Visually, you can see that it's got Leica's painted red dot. However, it's not a standard crown where you pull it out to hack the movement. As you can see, this particular one here is running at the moment. This is a working prototype. You, so you probably see a lot of scratches and marks. It's been manhandled by many, many people. It's a crown that you push in to start the movement, as you can see, and you push it in again to hack it and stop that movement. So now we can adjust the time. It's quite ingenious, actually, and it's very, very different. You've noticed there's a red dot and the second hand has stopped at the moment. We're in the hacking mode, so we can actually adjust the time to wherever we want. And what happens when I depress that button once, there's a white dot and the second hand starts. So now the watch is functional. I can't actually move the hands, but I can wind it. It is a manual wind watch and a very good movement indeed, as you can see from the back. And one of the nice things that I like about this particular crown system, in a normal watch, when you pull it out to hack it, the second hand stops wherever it is. In this particular unit, it resets that to zero straight away. So watch this. I've hacked it. I can adjust the time, as you can see, but the seconds hand instantly snapped back to zero. So as far as I'm concerned, that's a time-saving device. You hack the movement, the second instantly snaps to zero. You adjust the time to wherever you want. Start her up, away you go. I wish all my watches actually hacked this way. That's ingenious. The next cab off the rank is the date change. See, at the two o'clock, we've got another pusher, another button like you'd use on a camera, but this thing here changes that date. So by depressing it, you can cycle through the dates nice and easy. It's something to do. It's some input that you put into the watch. I like this. I like functions like this because it gets you to do something. And 
For me personally, if I own something like this, I'd probably wear this button out in the first month because I'd be going like this every day. That's just me. But put that aside, you notice there's another crown at the four o'clock and that's the GMT function. And the difference between the L2 and the L1 is that crown. You've basically got an inner rotating bezel with a time scale of 12 hours that allows you to adjust the second time zone on this particular watch, the L2. So if I pull that crown out, you can see the inner rotating bezel can turn clockwise or anti-clockwise. And I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a nice, there is this satisfying subtle feel that you get that gets ever so slightly firmer as it approaches the hour marker. It gently snaps into position. It's something that you actually have to feel to appreciate. It feels premium and purposely designed. And not only for the positive feedback, but it's a little bit of pleasure and satisfaction in using. Now in conjunction with that inner rotating bezel, you've also got a marker for that GMT function. And that changes from black to white and black again in a 24 hour cycle. It shows you night and day in that secondary time zone. And that's pretty nifty. Now as for the sub dial at six o'clock, that's self-explanatory. That's the running seconds hand. Now the only thing that I haven't shown you on this dial is that unusual indicator between the eight and the nine. As you can see, it's white or mostly white. What that is, is a power reserve indicator. And being a manual wind movement, the more you wind the watch, the longer the white line appears. And when you reach a fully extended white line, the watch has full power reserve. In this case, 60 hours. And when that line becomes almost fully blacked out, you know it's time to wind that watch again. So it's a slightly elongated power reserve window, and it's modeled after one of Leica's early light meters for the M3 cameras. It's basically displaying gradually closing shutter blades. Again, that's wonderful for a camera brand incorporating something like that in here. So if I turn my attention to the specifications of the watch, they are both the same size. They're both coming at 41 millimeters with a 14.5 mil height. The main crown is a 7.3 millimeter crown. The knurling is fantastic and the water resistance offered by both watches is 50 meters. On the L2, the GMT crown at the four o'clock, that comes in at 5.4 millimeters and the date pusher on both watches is a rectangle and very pleasing to operate. And the difference in the weight between the L1 and the L2 is one gram, one minuscule gram. This comes in at 79 grams, the GMT 80 grams. And on the wrist, although I measure 41 mil on both watches, as you can see, because it's mostly dialed with a small bezel, it does and it will present a little bit larger than normal. That height coming in at 14.5 mil, it's doable. It is sitting a little bit proud because of the flat sides of that case. However, the comfort on this leather strap has been very, very good. So what has Leica made here? What have they created? Well, to me, it's a very hands-on interactive timepiece. It's extremely easy to use and understand. Once you've spent several days with this, the functions are second nature. But it's basically a camera on your wrist and a very niche product at that. Now we've spent enough time on the dial and functions of the watch. Let's talk about the movement. And if we turn the watch over, it's a manual wind movement. There's no Geneva stripes, no perlage, no blued screws. And for me, this is in line with Leica's minimalist industrial feel. Very similar to their range finders. It's meant to work, it's meant to look clean and functional, and this does that job perfectly. And the beauty of this movement is, it's designed from the bottom up, or as we say, from scratch. And I mentioned Leica teamed up with Matthias, the former movement builder, and they also wanted to maintain their made in Germany designation with all their products. That's why they also entered into a partnership with Lemon Precision when it comes to the manufacturing side. So my next question, can you go swimming with this watch? Well, the answer is no. The watch is water resistant to 50 meters. So just like you keep your camera out of the water on a hot summer's day, so too with this watch, it's highly recommended it comes off your wrist when you go for a dip. So putting the watches side by side, they're exactly the same dimensions, functions, the only main difference, the GMT in a rotating bezel. So what is it that I don't like about these watches? Because we all know that all watches have negatives. Well, first and foremost, I've got to touch on the price. These are quite pricey. They have the reputation of Leica behind them. And as many of us know, that costs money. And some of you might say for that price, you'd at least expect it to take photos as well. After all, it is a Leica. <laughs> Do you know what? That's a thought. That would be nice. Maybe the next watch. 
Secondly, these are a very niche watch and I can see these becoming somewhat of a collector's piece as time goes by. They're not a limited edition, however, if you know anything about Leica, older cameras with older serial numbers fetch more money. And some of these first editions with the early serial numbers are probably going to do the same. But what about the technical side of things? What are the negatives? Well, for me being a strap junkie with all of my watches, I've never really liked 21 mil straps. Now, although these watches are finished to a very high level with rotonized and diamond indices and hands, there's no loom. It would have been nice to see a touch of loom, some dots alongside those markers, maybe slender lines on the handset, but maybe that's an overstretch. Next observation for me, although the watch is only 41 mil, being an all dial watch with a very thin bezel, the presence on the wrist is quite dominating. It's gonna wear larger than the specs would indicate. And personally, knowing Leica over the past 30 years as a professional photographer, I would have loved to see a smaller footprint on this, say around 39, 38 mil, with the same design layout, that would be beautiful. As for the sapphire crystal, it has anti-reflective coating on both sides. And in saying that, be prepared for some fingerprints, things that you'll be continually cleaning. Not dissimilar to a camera lens. And these two watches being working prototypes, I've noticed quite a few scratches on the actual anti-reflective coating. But as I mentioned earlier, these have been treated through so many hands. Even at that grand opening, they were being handed around from person to person like they were fresh cookies from a cookie jar. As nice as it is to be able to press buttons, turn this, grab that, the little child in all of us loves playing with toys, even if they're very expensive ones to say the least. Personally, I feel that date change at the two o'clock could accidentally be pressed throughout the day during your normal routine. So a potential lock button on that would have been nice for assurance. Also, this GMT model in its truest form is basically the addition of a rotating bezel to tell the second time zone, rather than an actual complication in the movement. So I think the price differential between the two watches should have been closer. So finally, this is not a perfect watch, but it's great to see a big name like Leica creating their own mark in the watch industry. And I hope this is just the start of many more to come in the future from this company. So Leica's new watches, they're not just gimmicks, they're not toys. They're built very well. They're designed to be serious timepieces manufactured under the Leica name with its long successful reputation behind it. These are not for everyone and definitely a niche product. But then again, so too are their cameras and lenses. The people who are really gonna appreciate these are those who already have an interest in photography and in Leica as a whole. Along with that, the dollar value is of no real significance here for them. You're buying into a brand and a company with a history and reputation over 150 years. Nonetheless, enough said. I think it's time to get out there, grab the M6 and start creating some beautiful images myself. After all, I am a photographer. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you all in the next video.